Hi and welcome. So today I want to share with you a little bit about diet mentality and making the right choices for yourself in terms of food as an emotional eater. So if you're new here, welcome. My name is Michelle. I'm a holistic nutritionist specializing in emotional eating. And I wanted to talk about this because sometimes when we are emotional eaters, um, you know, we have so many conflicting and confusing rules around food. You know, every day there's a new study, there's something new that's coming out about food, and it makes it really difficult for us to start discerning what works for us. And so this is, this sort of makes us feel like you know, what do we do? So a lot of the times with clients, they've tried intuitive eating, they're listening to the nutrition, you know, noise out there, they're trying all of these things, and they're not understanding what's really going on. And so sometimes we feel like nutrition, it is pretty simple, it can be pretty simple, but again, it's not simple. And so, you know, just what I've learned over the years, when I was first starting off in my journey, I started off with a lot of diets and restricting calories because conventionally what's out there is that if we restrict calories, we can control our body, we can control so many things about ourselves. And so this is not something that you know, we think too much about. We're like, if we eat this way, this, you know, this diet sounds good, this sounds good, this sounds good, and we're looking really externally to us. We're not understanding how food works in our body. And something that I found is that we need to really look at how our body feels. So when there's so much conflicting advice out there in terms of the food choices and restricting, and when we're emotional eaters, we are not as in tune with our body. We're um, disconnected from our body, from food, from our emotions. So we're really taking in a lot of external information, trying to make it fit. And, you know, there's a lot of um, information out there. There's a lot of science and data that seems really compelling. And I totally get it because that can help us make choices for ourselves. But what I found is that the external diets, they are not helping us discern what works for our body. So us understanding our body is a really big missing component from all of the, all of the diets out there. It's not really helping us tune into what works for us. And so when I was on my own emotional eating journey, I was you know, I could see if I ate a certain way how I felt. I experimented with a lot of diets, but it was really about restriction. What would sort of give the external result the quickest? And over time, when the same diet wouldn't give the same result, I knew there was something more going on. And so we really need to tune into our body, into the food choices that we're making to see how it works for our body. And so this is why when we're working through our emotional eating pattern, we need to connect back to food. We need to connect back to true nourishment. So true nourishment doesn't mean that here is, a, you know, a step-by-step -step of you eat this, you eat this, you eat this. There are principles involved in um, nourishing your body, in understanding how your body works, seeing your stress patterns. Especially when you're an emotional eater, it's not just you're a blank slate and your life is completely calm and you're eating foods. You know, foods have an impact on our body. They impact us, they affect us. And we can take in all of this knowledge and see how it works for our specific body. And the reason I wanted to chat about this is that sometimes I have clients come in and they'll ask about gluten. I should be avoiding gluten. Yes, no. And so there are different levels of understanding food. You know, um, wheat, for example, in uh, Europe, it digests differently for a lot of people versus the wheat in North America because of the hybridization process. Um, depends on if it is organic, if it is sprayed. Um, it depends on how stressed you are, how good is your digestion, how well you do a product. So there's so many factors involved. We can't just say gluten isn't great for you. And then that can come down to a choice of most things are made of wheat, um, breads and all of these things. And if we're over consuming one food, we want to vary our diet. We want to get more um, variety. And so this is these are all the different things that we have to take into account. And so what I want to share with you is that when we start nourishing our body, 
um, we're looking at how we interact with food, how we feel with food, how satisfied we feel, how, um, you know, how long food stay in our body. Foods, like I said, they have qualities and they're going to give us information. And so the way that I love working with nourishment for my clients, um, is usually in the first phase of the emotional eating evolution program. And that's because we can start seeing our patterns with food, how we interact with food, how many rigid rules and restrictions we have around food. And if we're able to just sort of sink in and see how a food feels in our body, how it connects to our hunger, connecting back to our true hunger, connecting back to nourishing ourselves and shifting some of those diet rules of restricting calories or fat or whatever, and seeing how we actually feel in our body. And so this is important because a lot of the times emotional eaters are on these diets. A lot of us in society are listening to all of these different things about food and restriction, and we don't know how to nourish our body so it feels good. And we need to understand some principles around food and nourishment and understand our environment and the society we live in. And so the way I love to do that is with clients really getting in touch with their natural body cues, um, taking in a few um, specific strategies to create meals that satisfy all components of hunger, that they're having daily bowel movements, that their digestion is optimized so we can see how well um, their body feels eating a certain way and how they feel in their body. How are their moods? Are they imbalanced or not? Because our our gut and our digestion impacts our mood. And so when things are more in harmony and balance, we're going to notice um, certain results with our body and shifting of our nervous system. So this is just one key area that we need to look at as emotional eaters because stress and uncomfortable emotions and distress is what really puts us into this pattern. But stress can be coming from the way we're eating and the types of foods we're eating and the restrictive mindset we have around food. And so we want to really be looking at that and shifting that at the same time. And so uh, along with that, we're looking at um, how are we treating our body? Are we listening to the rhythms that our body needs? Are we honoring those rhythms? Are we, for example, getting enough rest? Are we, um, you know, not getting enough rest and that's going to impact our hunger. It's going to impact our food choices. So we have to look at all of these components. And then of course, our emotional regulation and our triggers around emotional eating. Are we looking at those at a deeper level? And so when we're able to combine these three areas, yes, looking at food as nourishment, this is where we can discern this food works for us or not. And something I want to add in here is that, you know, emotional eating is a coping mechanism. So beyond the food, we have to look at what we use the food to soothe ourselves from. What is the addictive quality we have to certain foods? And when we're able to discern that more and more, we're going to know our true hunger from our emotional hunger. This is why I don't like intuitive eating because it just sort of says whatever food pops into your head, you go to, and it doesn't leave you with tangible steps of discerning true versus emotional hunger. And that is so important because it doesn't mean it's a genuine, genuine need of your body. And even if we do indulge in, let's say, emotional foods, we're not getting to the root of what's creating that pattern. The food is a band-aid, no matter if it's an emotional food, if we are processing and moving through that deeper level of emotions and we do have an uh our body wants a certain food they can be comfort foods that are going to nourish our body because the emotional process in the body is a physical process it requires biochemicals and it requires nutrients and vitamins and minerals so we our body after being depleted from moving through our emotions will naturally want certain foods and so i remember one time doing this process with my emotional eating and having this craving and wanting to go to the the processed foods but i i sat and i moved through the process with with my emotional eating and the hunger that was coming up was true hunger and I wanted a kale salad and I wanted chia and I wanted different foods that would nourish my body and give it the missing nutrients that were probably depleted from that processing. So foods with magnesium and things that will support like that are depleted during a stress response. So this is all to say that 
emotional eating is really multifaceted and multi-layered and one step of that is really looking at how we nourish ourselves and finding a way that works for us that we're seeing um, not just we're putting in the right calories or the right foods or the right fats or whatever is prescribed to us seeing how it feels in our body how it digests in our, our body um, through that whole process and how we feel after in terms of our mood and our energy levels we want to look at all of these components as well well as how are we honoring our body and the emotions around that because they impact how we nourish ourselves as well. So I hope this sort of gives you a bit more clarity on how you're nourishing yourself. Of course, the how-to and the step-by-step -step of doing that is inside of the Emotional Eating Evolution program. But if you have been trying diet after diet and feeling like it's not working, it's because there are other components that are needed to connect you back to your body, connect you back to food and your emotions to really um, resolve this emotional eating pattern. So if you have any questions about this, please let me know below. Um, if you're interested in the Emotional Eating Evolution program, you can find out more. I'll put the link below. This is a 12-week container. It's a step-by-step -step process with lots of support and accountability, coaching, um, deeper tools to really resolve your emotional eating at the root so that you can finally feel confident in your body and around food. So you can check out more below. Um, please be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't, and I look forward to sharing more with you, and I hope you have a great day.